Hi, my name is Chuck. I'm the lead technician for the cable install new launch team um, based out of New York. What we're going to do is we're going to go over a couple of different tools that we use in-house that will make your day go a lot easier. Um, and then proper technique and style on to how to properly connect RG6 connectors, how to test them, and how to tone them out. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with some of the tools. We're going to go over them from right to left. This right here is my Klein Single Pocket Quick Down and Don't Dirty Tone Generator. Basically, put this in one end, put this on the other end, I turn it on, and it will give me a tone. Plug this into the master bedroom, go into the living room with the cable box, plug it in right here, hit this button, it will turn it on, and I'll hear a straight signal, an audio signal, that there's a straight connection for this particular device. This also acts as a mini wand, so if I plug it in and I just ran it over the wire, it will create a signal as well. Nice handy tool. This one right here is your crimp tool. Um, you'll be using this when you go to crimp these connections on. This is an old one, but uh, here's one right here. Nice and secure. Put this up here. Here you have your wire cutters. Um, these are the ones of choice. Basically, cut the RG6. Nice, clean, easy. That's it. Lightweight, keep them in your pocket. Then you have your stripper tool. Um, this is the tool of choice. I got something in here. Um, it's clean, straight, down, and dirty. Um, it tells you um, pretty much which direction you need to go, but just know that the end that, that uh, shifts up and down needs to be down, that's the exit end. So the cable will go through. Oop, I gotta push this first. Come on, is there something in there? Yep, something was in there. The cable will go through like this. We'll talk about that here in a sec. Let's stick this up here. We have our uh, line tracer. So basically, if you're by yourself, you have, you can put these in each room, uh, bedroom one, bedroom two, kitchen, master bedroom, go to the box and plug it in. And once you plug it in, it will show you, depending on which light you have, black, green, blue, or red, will light up. So you can say, okay, the master bedroom is this wire, and the um, uh, living room is this wire, the kitchen is that color wire. And you can mark them. I use white tape. Well, we use white tape for um, our marking. So when we're out in the field and you find the main line coming in, just take a little piece of tape, real simple technique, save you a lot of work, and especially rework. Just a little piece of tape on the wire. This will let us know if somebody has to go back out, they can say, okay, my guy was working on this wire, here's our white tape. It's just a marker, you ain't gotta write nothing on it. Just get some color tape, we prefer white because it's black cable outside. And the reason this is beneficial is because you're gonna start undoing drops and you're gonna have 10 or 20. When you find your drop, make sure you just locate it. So make sure you have a piece of light tape. I use the Milwaukee. This is actually a 15 in one or 19 in one. Um, it's a ratchet, pulls up out of the wall. Um, it's a wire cutter. Um, and then I got my T-set here and then I got all my different Phillips and flatheads in here um, to where I can pop stuff out and actually get stuff, uh, a face plates on and off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna review the first steps in connecting a wire. So I'm gonna move some of this stuff over here. Sort of be out of frame. We don't have a lot of stuff going on and we'll bring stuff in the frame as we uh, get closer. I'm gonna scoot these over here. I'm gonna get these over here. Okay. There's one more tool. Let me let me back up real quick. There's one more tool that we're going to talk about, but we're not going to talk about it now. We're going to get some cables, but this is my Klein uh, network tester. Um, I use this for Cat5, Cat6, um, RJ11, RJ45, uh, RJ6. Um, I can trace out any type of wire in up to 300 feet away. So if you're on the third floor, fourth floor, you can pretty much grab a wire with coax. You can grab a wire 10, 10 stories away. So if someone's on the 10th floor, they need to find out where the wire is in the basement, this is the tool you want to use. We'll talk about this. You can get these fairly uh, inexpensive at the Home Depot. I'm just a client guy, so I have this uh, big one, and I have the mini. So let's do this. So the first thing you want to do is you want to have your, your coax. You want to get your Klein stripper. Make sure that the exit is pointing out. This right here, self uh, self 
uh, release. You just squeeze it, get your cable through, about so-so. And I want you to listen to the crunch. And the crunch is basically, this is a quad wire. And a quad wire has four protective coatings before you get to the coax. So you have the outside shield, you have the wire mesh, you have the aluminum, um, and then you have the white silicone, and then you have the actual RJ or the actual coax copper wire itself. And this is designed for outdoor and weather resistant type situations. But listen as I'm turning the crackling. Turn until you stop hearing the uh, braided wire being cut. Put your fingers on like this in a pull motion and then just pull. There is a perfectly stripped wire. Now, um, with your tool, you just simply click it and that end is gone. And there's one more, there's a couple things you wanna do here. I'm gonna scoot this over here on the side for a second. Now that you have this wire, um, in some cases, uh, in, in all cases, you don't want this wire mesh here. I don't know if you can see it. You don't want the wire mesh to touch that copper. If you do, it's gonna cause signal interference, which is going to mess with your decibel and the signal going to that place. So what you wanna do is you wanna peel this down here. Peel the wire mesh down. You wanna be careful. Once you do this a lot, um, you get uh, tough skin. So you just peel it down here. Another piece, reason why you wanna peel this down is because this wire mesh here um, around it is gonna act as a coat to slip the jacket or the F6 connector over. So metal and plastic, the friction, it gets tight, but metal on metal, it tends to be a little less cumbersome to get an F connector on. So I'm gonna set this down here for a second. We're gonna look at these compression connectors here. So if you can see in the center, um, it's got technically two black strips. And in the top, uh, the way this works is you put your cable through, your coax is gonna come through, um, your inside is your cap or the head. You want to put the uh, silicone protective sheathing right up against that cap inside. I don't know if you can see it, if the camera is gonna zoom in or not. And then of course the, the coax is gonna come through and that's gonna give you a good solid seal to give you maximum performance. But this is the uh, female side, this is the male side. Um, and basically you just slip your wire in. Now, uh, depending on the wire, it can be tough. Now there's gonna be some tricks that I'm going to tell you. I'm not gonna do them now because I really don't need them. But if you're outside and it's, you know, really cold and the, the cable is swollen up or if it's hot and the cable's swollen up, you getting this connector on is gonna to be tough. You can twist and spin, but these grooves and cuts are going to wear on your finger over time. Your, your fingers are gonna be just numb. So there's a trick here, and you gotta be careful with this trick, and it's gonna require your tester here. Um, and we are in the process of making some devices that will help you. So basically, you just screw your tester line tracer on. Let's screw this on here. And then with the line tester on there, you have a lot more force just by gripping the wire. And then you can shove, you see the connector going on? Or you can twist the connector on, either or. See how it's going in? So when your hands are cold and you don't want to you know, squeeze and put all that pressure on those two fingers or the index and the thumb, just use your tester here. So I'm gonna pull this off here. I'm gonna show you one more trick and then we're gonna look at the, uh, we're gonna look at the end of the barrel here. You gotta be careful because this will destroy your tester and you don't wanna do that. And even still, I didn't put a lot of pressure because I don't wanna mess my tester up. It still is not fully flushed. The other test is if you can't get it fully flushed with that, you wanna use a traditional barrel. Now on this test, after you use this barrel, you gotta throw it away, you can't use it anymore. But you basically put the barrel on there, screw it in, you get your drill, and clamp your drill. I don't have my drill, but you put your drill on here, and then you reverse it in. And once you screw it in, the force of the drill will just shove this thing in here. Uh, but once again, once you do that with your drill, this barrel connector is completely destroyed. You can't use it anymore, throw it away, don't even attempt, because the pressure of the drill um, is going to crush some of the uh, items inside, and it's just gonna mess your signal up. Now, I don't know if you can see but this is still uh, not 
Um, I'm still shaking here probably. This is still not as flush as it, as it needs to be. So I'm gonna put a little force on it here. There we go. So now as you can see, this is totally flush where the white silicone is almost coming out and the metal sheathing is not touching. Now what you wanna do is you don't want all this coax sticking out. You wanna try and keep it even with the F6 head. So you get your wire cutters. Some use flush cutters, um, but this is fine as well. It gives me a little lip, which I'm okay with that. Some like to keep it flush, but I'm okay with that. So if you use these clippers or these uh, wire cutters, that's fine. Some pack an extra pair, you're not gonna notice a difference. Now that we have the F connector properly connected, we're gonna use our compression tool. Now this compression tool is an adjustable. So you can shift it up, you can shift it down, depending on your type of uh, compression. I already know that my compression tool is set for this compressor or uh, for this F connector. So we're going to go ahead and connect this and hopefully you can see how the burl is gonna force this down. And if you notice, look at the black uh, top, how it's going to go over the bottom black, which is going to secure to the black cable. So we're gonna go real slow if we can. Oh, I moved a little bit. But I don't know if you notice, but that black went over the bottom black and it's locked on this cable. You can't pull that off now. I mean, it's it's secure. Now to show you the difference between the two, if you put these right here, see how the one on the right or your left is a little bit longer because the compression has locked it on. Now this is a totally good uh, F connector. Um, you wanna make sure these are good. Once again, I'm not too concerned. When we crimp this, it brought up uh, a little more coax. You can clip it, but I'm good with that. For the Colo Tech team, that is passable. But once again, it's secure um, and it's sealed tight. Now, we're not gonna do this side here, but I'm gonna show you now how to test with my Klein tester, which is going to save you a lot of time. Let me get my data shark tool that never works and watch it work this time. So I need to just strip this wire. There we go. So let's paint a picture here. Let's say this is upstairs in the house. Let's say this end is three stories, four stories. Let's say it's five stories in the uh, basement, in the lockbox. There's probably 150 different wires down there and there's no markings or tags are missing and you just can't find the main line coming in for whatever reason. I'll give you another scenario about the pole, how to use this Klein tester. So this one is uh, connected up and we think it's the main drop. This is upstairs. So what you do is, let's move some of this stuff out of the way so you can see it. We'll talk about one more tool as well. I'm gonna pull out my Klein tester. So this is the wand, and this is my cone generator. I'm gonna set this here for a second. So I can test phone lines, RJ45, coax, any type of copper wire. Um, if I'm looking for something, I can find it literally within seconds. And the reason that this is good is because with coax, it carries a very strong signal. So, um, you know, RJ45s, we have the connectors here, uh, but for the coax, we need to do something a little different. So what I would do is I would first turn my tone generator on. I would push it twice because I like the tone, the pulsating tone so I can find it. And then I will take this here. And because I don't want to make sure, I want to make sure this doesn't come off, I'm going to wrap it around. So it is set there. And I may even put a piece of tape on it because there's nothing worse than you going downstairs and someone in the house or the kid or somebody accidentally steps on the, hits the wire and this comes off. But this got teeth that, you know, it's pretty, pretty solid. So you wanna make sure that's crimped on. Now, you take your wand, the wand has the power button here. You have an audio here. So in some situations, uh, customers can't stand that wand noise. Um, so you can put, a ear, uh, put your headphones in here. This is your volume, but always start off with your volume being pretty low. Um, once again, I use the Fluke 3000. Um, this one costs like $300. You can get them for $69, but this will save you. I can find a wire in a matter of seconds where a traditional tech will take hours um, if there was 100 to 200 wires down in the basement. It would just take way too long. So basically with this on here, I go down to the basement. I'm gonna put this back over here so it's pretty far away. I'm gonna have my arm even covering it. But I simply listen to the tone. Let me turn it up some. So 
So as you can see, as you get closer, the signal is stronger. And as I touch this copper, it is really, really strong. And I'll give you an example. I'm gonna have two here. You see how it's making the connection from my hand to this copper here? But because on that connection point, the signal is not as strong. That's my wire. Or even running it on here. See how it's a weak signal? So I can say I'm close to the wire, but this is my actual wire just by touching it. And I'm going to show you how powerful this wand is. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to be here. And I'm going to take the wand out of frame. I am probably four feet away. Maybe four. Yeah, maybe four feet away, and I can still see that this wire is within four feet of me, somewhere in this room. And as I come closer, as you can see, it's a great tool. Um, this tone generator um, will trace and track any wire. Another scenario is you're in the um, you're working on a townhouse, multi-dwelling unit, um, and you're in the backyard. Um, the drop. You're trying to figure out what's going on with the drop and you got to go up on the pole you get up on the pole there's you know three or four different taps the taps aren't labeled with the correct tag traditionally you got to break every one of those tags to find your drop which is mind dummy we're talking hours with this here i can connect this wire to the wire that i want to come through and find it or vice versa um, and simply get up on that pole and just run my wand across any wire and find that wire. Once again, it's a great tool. It's a great investment. It will save you an incredible amount of time um, in troubleshooting and finding the wire. That's all this is used for. You want to make sure that you cut it off or your battery will go dead. This is a 9-volt battery, 2AA battery.